Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Minecraft. I'm your humble host. See you later. And I'm so glad that you came back to join us again. I'm just hanging out over here at our iron farm uh, that we just completed in the last episode. And uh, I was just checking up. Now, I've been doing a little bit of some AFK. And uh, look at that. This thing is working pretty good. Now, uh, it's not fast. This did not happen... Uh, um, well, I guess you could say it did happen overnight, because uh, what I've been doing is basically letting the uh, uh, farm run. You can see I've gathered up uh, uh, quite a few poppies and quite a bit of iron here. We almost have enough to uh, fill up a shulker box. All right, and uh, yep, I've just been checking. Our villagers are still doing okay. Uh, one of the things that I didn't mention in the last episode, if you want to do, uh, when you're putting your villagers in, if you happen to lose count or if you didn't use the counting blocks like I did, you can also hit F3 and then right over on the left side there, uh, you should see uh, the letter E. It's about the fifth uh, item down. And that first number, wherever you're looking, that see the number 10 there, 10 slash 196, something like that. That number 10 will tell you how many entities you're looking straight at. So that's how I verified, again, that I have 10 villagers over here. And then if I go over... Uh, yes, by the way, <laughs> we do have a new friend. We have several new friends. I'll tell you about that in just a second. And then if we look right up here, you can see we have also under by the where it says Minecraft. And then under Integrated Server, the letter C, the letter E says 10 uh 10 of 288 so i went out doing some uh resource gathering uh while i was uh, letting the farm run i went and grab uh gathered gravel <laughs> gab gather gravel whatever i went and gathered up a bunch of gravel and sand i mined up some terracotta and some red sand as well for some building materials and uh i happened to while i was flying around I came across a biome that had the uh, wolves in it and I actually happened to have a bunch of bones on me so I went ahead and uh, tamed up a, b a bunch of uh, puppy dogs so look at him isn't he so cute so uh, he needs a name again I still haven't gotten any suggestions from you guys on uh, on names for the uh, pets so um, if I don't hear anything from you soon I'm just gonna start picking a name myself now, I don't know if you are the, you know, keen of eye. You may notice that my kelp looks a little bit different. And one of the reasons for that is I've actually found an updated uh, resource pack for the Sortex uh, Fanver. Uh, it is not an official uh, updated uh, resource pack. It was by uh, someone who was in a YouTube video who was speaking Spanish and had it offered uh, for a download. Now, the license for the Sortex Fanver, if you read it, uh, it does say, you know, don't redistribute the pack and this, that, and the other, uh, which I will not uh, redistribute this pack, but it does say that you can share uh, personally. So if you are interested uh, in this pack, you can send me a, a message uh, at uh, on the YouTube and i will respond to you and we'll figure out a way if you if you're really interested in using this pack one of the things i like about this pack is the horses have been updated to look more like the original sortex horses uh and it does work with the horse armor so if we grab a saddle and put it on our horse here you can see we have the sortex uh, uh horses uh, also, I really like the skeleton horses a lot better uh, with this resource uh, texture pack as well. And there's a couple other uh, kind of neat things I want to show you. Now, uh, I didn't just, I'm not just using the uh, texture pack uh, uh, just like I got it. What I ended up doing was I've been doing some playing around. And if I just go here to the texture packs, uh, I'll show you in under options and resource packs. So you can see here, uh, this is the gentleman, uh, Arturo G, uh, 3504, and I believe he's the one, or he and some others, now, I really couldn't understand what he was saying, I, I don't speak Spanish, uh, but I believe he and some friends of his uh, worked on updating uh, the pack uh, 
to where it is now and it's uh, all set up for 113.2 and it is very faithful to the original Sortex Fanver uh, uh, using the 1.12 I believe textures for the most part and then they've added in some of the things for uh, or, and I'm going to take out this uh, see you later tweaks uh, for just a second and they've added some of the new blocks like the coral blocks and uh, textures for the fish and things like that so uh, one of the things that I wanted to show you guys is this pink shulker box right here and if I open this pink shulker box you'll see it's been named bookshelf uh, which is kind of odd I do agree uh, but I do have a bunch of books in it uh, so what I did was in my uh, tweaks I decided to choose the color pink and in my uh, see you later tweaks I have retextured it to look exactly the same as a bookshelf which means now I have Sortex Fanver textured functional bookshelf and looky there we have bookshelf and inventory you see the menu also looks a little bit different I borrowed the menu from uh, the other texture pack that I was doing so this is very much a mixed texture pack now I've also included the uh, the files for the uh, see-through item frames the visible item frames and then some other things that I did kind of on my own was uh, if I grab here I have some in rods uh, I have desaturated the end rod texture so that it's all just black and white so there's no more of the little purple tint here and the uh, base of it is gray which I think goes a lot better uh, with a lot more blocks the particle is custom I did that myself I actually edited the uh, particles file so it looks a little bit smoother than the vanilla the vanilla one looks uh, pretty pixelated some of the other things I worked on were um, if I grab some I should have some red sand here and you'll see my red sand is kind of not as bright red as it would be normally and then let me go ahead and craft up a couple of more blocks so there's the sand here's the sandstone here's the cut sandstone and uh, oh I didn't do the chiseled what's the recipe for the chiseled just two like that and so here's a here is a oops that stuff breaks really easy so there's a chiseled I really like the chiseled because it has the the uh, wither boss kind of uh, thing there I think that would be cool if we use that in some uh, in some lore uh, so here's the smooth sandstone which actually looks almost identical if not exactly identical to the uh, to the other and then here's the stairs which matches up with the other now uh, basically all I did was uh, desaturate it because if I take my tweaks off again how orange this stuff is and it's so orangey uh, that I really felt like it's it's just uh, it's too bright and I probably wouldn't be using this in any builds or anything like that with it being this bright uh, so that was the reason for me and I just cut the saturation by about 50% and I really like the color uh, how it was uh, as it came out what you guys just saw and you can see it changes the the item uh, texture as well as the texture here so as you can see here we are this is the uh, default uh, Sortex uh, this is a note block you hear that boop, 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 boop. And a lot of people use note blocks as uh, storage crates. And so what I did was I actually changed the texture uh, of the, uh, let me pull her up there. So I actually, I kept the outside and then I used the uh, wood texture for the inner portion. And then I just tinted the wood texture so that it would match the outer portion. But then what I did was, is I made some alternate textures that will actually uh, as I place the blocks down in the world that will randomly choose between the different alternate uh, textures so as you can see here I've got uh, two crates and these ones have a X band on them and then here's one that doesn't and I assure you all of these note blocks are exactly the same this one just randomly has 
Yes, and you may also notice that the uh, planking is going up and down here vertically. And then on this one, it's horizontal. Those are actually two completely different textures. So uh, the cool thing about that is, is if I just go around and I want to plunk down a bunch of uh, crates, that they'll have a nice random look to it. Uh, now I did a few uh, more uh, textures with the bookshelves that I did uh, with the dope blocks. So the way it works basically is as I place it in the world, you can see this is pretty much the default uh, bookshelf uh, texture. And there is a way to weight it so that you'll actually get more of a certain type and less of the other. So you can see here, this one switches, this one switches the bottom shelf for the top shelf and the top shelf for the bottom shelf. And it just mixes things up a little bit. This one is exactly the same as that one. And that one's the same, that one's the same. And then look at that. All of a sudden we get one that's really different. Uh, this one is an empty one. It has a little bit of some cobwebs here and a uh, potion or water bottle. Uh, I think that's a potion bottle sitting on a shelf there. And there's just some little barely dust. You can't really, it's kind of hard to see, but there's some little uh, light pixels here. And I just did that, you know, just went in with a pencil tool at one pixel and uh, and retextured uh, these, did some cutting and uh, pasting and things like that. So you can see here's another variant. This one is one that doesn't have quite so many books and it just has, you know, kind of the empty area. And when you put these all next to each other, it is nice because you do get that variance. Uh, you, all of them don't end up looking exactly the same. And if I pick that one up and put it somewhere else, you see, uh, uh, it gives me a different uh, random texture. So I really like that and I want to incorporate that into a few more blocks possibly. Uh, but for the time being, just the note blocks and the uh, bookshelves uh, just as an experiment. And I'm really happy with how they turned out. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys uh, right after we update our iron farm. So let's see, iron farm, take that off the list. And uh, sorry if it feels like a, a little bit of a random uh, episode. I just want to kind of catch you guys up to what's been going on. And then let's see. So iron farm, iron farm, done. And day, I'm going to say this was around day uh, 800. I'm just, I'm just going to say 800. And the reason for that is if I were to F3 right now, which I will, and show you guys, if you look at the day, it's 1225. So <laughs> the reason for that is because of all the AFK. I literally have been just leaving the game running uh, overnight for about a week. Uh, all day, all night. Uh, I've been playing a lot, but whenever I go to bed or whenever I go to work uh, during the daytime, I just leave the game running. So I cleaned up this area over here a little bit. We'd mined up a lot of puzzle from the growing of the spruce trees over here and I ran almost through my entire dirt supply filling this area back in but I made this path and the path is coming up this way into this little flat area up here of our savanna and look at this this is a blank canvas this is a big area for us to uh, do something and then right over here I just got started sketching out an idea like I mentioned about the lighthouse by extending this uh, area out onto a, a natural sandbar that was right down there. And I want to terraform this, basically make it look like a, uh, a, a stony, uh, rocky base, and then maybe some bricks around and build it up. This will be the base of where our lighthouse is going. And the lighthouse is going to go on, uh, it's going to probably start maybe on this level or maybe two blocks up from this level and then the size of it I want it to be pretty big around because I would like for to find a use for the inside of it uh, other than uh, just the aesthetics of the outside and there are a couple of really good uses that we could uh, find for a tower uh, that's tall and big around and one of the things I was thinking was this could be where we put our automated uh, collection system for when we are uh, growing spruce and jungle trees so if I put the uh, section down here with the water streams and or, or, or 
hopper mine carts to pick up all the uh, saplings and things like that, uh, then we should be able to make this building tall enough that we should be able to grow full height uh, spruce trees and full height jungle trees inside. So I think that would be a really good uh, use of the lighthouse. Uh, why am I building a lighthouse? I really love this uh, seaside area that we're in, this little harbor right here. And I thought, I need an anchor point, uh, something massive, something with scale, something to anchor uh, this area in a sense of aesthetics. And then once we have the lighthouse built, what I'm thinking about doing is uh, I want to uh, make a, a, a dock area that goes around this way. Maybe we'll build a ship in here. And this is uh, this harbor is uh, this little cove is uh, on a diagonal and I really would love to try out some ideas uh, with a diagonal ship. I've seen some uh, that other people have built and they're really beautiful. Uh, and you know, building on a diagonal is something new and exciting. So we're about to encounter some mobs since it's nighttime. So let's head on back. And then on the way back, uh, I wanna show you the uh, sugarcane farm real quick because uh, that's doing really good so far um, we have quite a bit of shulker boxes of sugarcane to the point where I have turned off the farm right now it's not running and we can see our shulker input light is on because we have no shulker uh, boxes in the system so I've turned it off temporarily until we can get some more shulker boxes in there now uh, one more thing my texture tweaks for this texture pack uh, I noticed that this originally was animated so that it would have a very slight glow. It only consists of two textures, a bright one and a dim one. So I made the brighter one brighter and I made the dimmer one dimmer. So now there's a much more pronounced uh, pulsating. Um, and <laughs> I haven't decided if I really 100% like how much that it's pulsating. Uh, but it is a really cool. I think it's a really cool feature to be able to do that. Uh, I want to come over here. Obviously, you can see I've done a little bit of work to our nether portal uh, area. And you can see I've got some fire going up here. And I did decide uh, for aesthetic purposes to be able to build with uh, fire that I turned off the fire tip. You can just go here and go uh, uh, do, I believe it's, uh, excuse me, game rule, game rule and then uh, do, and you can see daylight cycle, entity drops, and fire tick. So do fire trick, and then you can choose between true and false. Uh, if it's true, uh, this uh, fire would probably catch this wood on fire, <laughs> and all of the forest would burn down wherever there is uh, lava or anything like that. Uh, and I just uh, I thought I want to build with fire so I thought like these braziers that I built over here are pretty cool and then uh, you can see I decorated up this entrance over here and then for some lighting inside I put fire uh, behind these uh, trap doors so yeah so uh, for aesthetic reasons I decided to turn the fire tick off so yeah so uh, I've been trying to stretch my building uh, styles and and abilities and things like that so i really just tried to go for some some different things over here in this hallway just to try out some uh some different ideas so we've got this floor that's made of the stripped spruce uh mixed in with the stone brick and then this is a three wide hallway but we have the stairs with a little gutter uh on each side and i really love how uh, adding these little details will give you know a lot of dimension rather than this just being a square hallway also there's some variegations in the roof over here and there's the light of the stone brick and the dark of the dark oak planks and here's another one of our little puppy buddies that doesn't have a name yet and uh, we still have our uh, mending villager over here he's safe and sound and being guarded by uh, this little guy and then, uh, now, a little short story, <laughs> kind of fun. One of the reasons why I really love to play this game, because, uh, you know, you're like, oh, what's going on, or I'm bored right now, or there's nothing happening, and then all of a sudden, this game will present you with situations. Uh, if you just use a little bit of creativity, 
and it can provide for, uh, in my case, literally hours of fun. Uh, so yeah, I had a little zombie pigman, baby zombie pigman came in here one day, and uh, while I was working on this, and I had these little areas over here, and I thought that is so cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trap them. So I started putting down some blocks and blocked off this little area here and just waited around a little while and sure enough he ran up into this uh, little area over here and I was able to put a trapdoor in front of his face uh, now this one's not in front of his face uh, it's above his head and uh, you can see I named this guy Junior uh, this is actually Junior too because what happened well uh, I said uh, he's gonna despawn if I don't name him so I'm gonna grab a name tag so I ran over to the house so, uh, you can see we have some more visitors as well uh, so I ran over to the house over there and I grabbed a name tag and I named it in an anvil and sure enough uh, whenever I came back over here uh, poor little junior had already uh, despawned I think because I went more than 32 blocks away which means there is a random chance of uh, any uh, you know uh, non-named uh, entity uh, mob to uh, despawn so when I came back he was gone and I was literally heartbroken I was so sad so sad so I had the name tag and I've been doing some other stuff around and if you remember moving the villagers we had some boats so I said you know what we're gonna go catch another junior and I really wish I'd have recorded it because it was so much derpy fun. I went into the nether, got a boat, found another junior, brought him in. He got loose. He actually ran outside. I ended up catching him in a boat down here and had to build a bubble column after I caught him in the boat. I had to build a two by two, a you know, four block bubble column in this little corner right here and shoot us up in a boat so that I could get back in here. And then uh, what I ended up doing was I skid right over here, right over this thing, so that I would land on this level. And then I was able to get through with the boat, and then I grabbed some dirt and uh, built another thing. And, you know, probably listening now to me telling the story, it doesn't sound quite as exciting <laughs> as it was. Because it was really 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 frustrating <laughs> he kept getting out and he kept running away and uh i honestly it, it was frustrating but honestly it was so much fun you guys so much fun i really love this game i love how much fun we're having and let's see do i have any yes i do, do i have some rose red here and if you use a stack of gravel uh, two stacks of gravel two stacks of sand and a half a stack of dye that will actually yield you four stacks of uh, concrete powder uh, as you can see this recipe uh, requires a lot of blocks but it ends up yielding you uh, eight so it is a one for one for each gravel and each sand you are going to get one block of uh, concrete powder so what I did was I recreated uh, uh, a design by Cupfan135 uh, and I made this little room which has an iron door and this room is very safe uh, there's no spawnable area in this room except for these three blocks and the uh, light level inside of here is very high it's like 13 14 because I've got uh, right behind here there's a piece of glowstone that was already there because uh, on the outside of this is the glowstone we had to light up that area for our drop shoot. So I already had that glowstone. And then behind this uh, birch trapdoor, which is another one of my custom uh, trapdoor uh, textures, um, there is a glowstone behind that as well. So this area is very well lit up. And basically when I AFK, what I do is I'll use this chest right here and I'll I'll take off all my armor boop, 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 and I'll put all of my armor and my items in the chest that way just in case something happens while I'm AFK like a game glitch or fall through the world or or something like that or get killed by a, a you know a, a zombie that you know, disobeyed the <laughs> spawning rules <laughs> something uh, that way all my items will be safe in here so I usually just get naked uh, before I go AFK <laughs> so naked AFK session so let me uh, just real quick explain what this mechanism is 
I have a uh, double chest up here where I can put uh, concrete powder. Uh, that will go into a hopper and into a dropper. Uh, if you don't have that much, you can just go ahead and put it in, in your uh, dropper. And I'll keep, you know, like, I'll keep uh, one stack in my, uh, or let's say, we'll keep a half a stack. Now, what I'll do is, uh, I will put the uh, concrete powder in my offhand, like this, okay? And what happens is, there's a source block of water right back there. And this is a block of obsidian, so that if I mine it, uh, you know, it takes a minute to mine. It's not going to insta-mine. Okay, so that water flows over and is being stopped by this uh, trapdoor, so it doesn't flow off everywhere. And then right underneath is this hopper. Okay, and this hopper feeds into this uh, collection chest. So I could, with this system... Literally, you could fill this up with concrete powder all the way full and set some, you know, mouse keys or something uh, so that you can walk away from it. And all of it will get collected in here from this hopper. So the way it works, and I'm not sure if this is going to come across loud for you guys or not, but uh, if I place a block down here, there is an observer here that is watching this uh, block space. As soon as I place a block down, this uh, observer powers this block with a piece of redstone underneath, which will cause this dropper to spit out uh, an item to me that will get caught in my inventory. And then if I mine the block, okay, you see that? So I mine the block. It went in here. There were two. Now there's three through the hopper. And I still have 33 in my hand because this guy bit one out when I mined it. So the way this works very simply is you just get right up against uh, this little corner right here, aim right at the middle of your uh, obsidian block, hold down right click and left click at the same time. Do right click first. So I'll just hold down right click, left click, and now I'm holding down both mouse buttons, both right click and left click. And what happens is I am turning this concrete powder into concrete very fast and the dropper you hear clicking behind me is keeping my inventory full so see how down in the lower left corner it says 32 33 32 33 back and forth that won't actually go down until that dropper runs out of concrete powder so i can just sit here with this method and uh and you know convert my concrete to concrete powder and uh that's enough for now so we've already done a stack and uh, almost a stack a half so I'll go ahead and I'll do that later off camera so you don't get annoyed <laughs> too much by the noise. But yeah, so uh, there is another uh, thing you can use this for. If you fill this up with logs, okay, you can switch to uh, the axe and put the logs in your offhand. And then you do the same thing, right click and left click. And that will convert all of your logs to uh, stripped logs. So you can use this to very quickly make stacks and stacks of uh, stripped logs. Uh, pretty cool. So that's my little uh, AFK room. It's also a uh, you know a, uh, a concrete converter and strip log converter machine. Uh, it's very simple. There is a tutorial on how to build this, and I'll put a link to Cubfan's tutorial uh, in the description. Uh, but yeah, that's our little AFK room. So before we sign off, let's uh, fly back over to the iron farm. And I don't know how long this episode's been. I'm probably going to try to cut it down to uh, 20 minutes if it's not longer than 20 minutes, which it probably is. It almost always is. <laughs> For some reason, I have the hardest time making a 20 minute video. They always come out an hour long. <laughs> but yeah, so in that amount of time, we finished up this stack and have added eight more into here so what i am going to do is i'm going to put down our shulker box and i'm going to empty this guy out of iron fill up our shulker box with as much as uh, possible all right and look at that and we have almost you know a, a minus a half a stack being a full another shulker box of iron so yeah the next bit that comes in uh i'll just be saving that up and we'll be using this for 
a rainy day when we want to make a bunch of iron blocks or a bunch of hoppers, some more redstone stuff, uh, lots of other uh, things that we have planned to going on. And off camera, I'm going to go and update the job board. I'm going to put some of our new projects on there. And look at that. Our reward for patiently waiting is we get to see some more iron coming in. Hi, guy. Hi, little buddy. Oh, he didn't like the sauna. But he did give us some iron. And that's why we built this thing. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming to join me. I'm see you later. And I had a great time hanging out with you guys. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys. <laughs>